So now that we have a basic range finder and a field of view, let's do a line of sight. Um, so we'll do a very similar setup as the field of view with a couple of um, couple of modifications. Um, again, I like the wireframe with uh, just blocking things out with cubes. Um, we could do these with empty game objects as well, but the cubes, uh, I think, kind of help visualize things. Uh, we'll call this line of sight. And I'm going to move this up just a bit. So I'm holding down the command key while we move this up just to just to snap. That's why things are lining up so well. We could also uh, do a little vertex snapping. Um, I'm going to scale this down uh, to about um, 0.5. And this is the thing that we're going to use to cast our array. Now, um, it's going to use colliders uh, in order to um, determine whether um, our array is hitting something, and we shouldn't really have an issue with casting array through the backside um, of a polygon, but it's always a good practice if we're not using the collider to turn it off. We'll keep it on for now to see what kind of glitches might pop up. So this line of sight, let me unlock a Playmaker here and refresh that. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to uh, determine. Um, so the first thing is that uh, I really want this object to constantly look at the target. And in this case, our, our current target is going to be our player. Um, we can always modify this a little bit later, but whenever it comes to, um, uh, to creating these basic mechanics, it's always best um, to uh, use this iterative process. And so we'll get the basic functionality working first, and then we'll refine it from there. So I'm going to add a state machine. Uh, and for now, um, I'd call my single state state machines idle, um, unless I have a compelling reason to, to change it, um, which we'll do once we start adding multiple states. And so I'm going to look for um, a specific action. We'll, we'll use a look at, and in transform, we have a look at. So we'll double click. Alternatively, we could use a smooth look at um, if we wanted to um, uh, you know, create a little bit of lag uh, in, in terms of, of, of the response, but for testing this, um, we'll just uh, do a look at, which will be instantaneous. And we'll drag the player in as the target, again, temporarily. Um, later, we could make this target dynamic uh, based on some behaviors. Um, the target position will let default, the up vector will leave it the way that it is and we'll keep things vertical. So in other words, it's not gonna pitch down right now. Um, it won't rotate along the Y axis. We will draw a debug line, and our debug line will be yellow for now. We'll do this every frame. So let's test this. Hit the play button and see if we're looking at the player. Um, and so as we rotate this, you can see that it is, in fact, looking at the player. Um, my player is a little low. Um, so if we cast away from this object, we run the risk of, of, of uh, missing it. And we'll correct for that a little bit later. Um, but the simple fix will just be to pick up the player a little bit. So currently we're looking in the direction of the player constantly. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to cast a ray um, from this object uh, and that will determine whether or not we're colliding with the player. So in order to do this, we'll go to our actions and we'll look for a ray cast. This is a physics action, so we can find that in the physics category. I'll double click to add that raycast. Now the raycast, there's a lot going on in here, but we don't need to use all the information. Uh, so we're gonna uh, cast a ray from the game object. So we'll use the owner's position, that's fine. Um, we'll let the position uh, default. We don't need to use anything here, but the direction, um, we wanna establish the direction for the ray. So I'm gonna toggle this equal and uh, I'm gonna hardwire a value in. And the way that the direction works is that we'll put a positive value of one in the direction that we want to cast array. So in the case of Z, um, or in the, this object, we want to cast it in the direction of Z because that is the forward direction of this object. And by default, that's what look at is using. It's using its Z direction as the forward direction. So we're now casting array in the direction uh, of Z uh, in self space, that's fine. Um, and our distance, we're going to want to shorten this distance. Um, casting a ray out 100 meters, um, we want to make this as efficient as possible. And the general rule is the shorter the ray, the less it has to consider uh, as it's traveling out through space and colliding with objects. And so I'm going to scale this back. I'll take this down to 20. 
Um, not 200, we'll take this down to 20 or 15 for the sake of the demo. So that'll cast a ray 15 units out. And if my memory serves correct, our, our radius um, uh, or, or the size of our, um, uh, our, our range finder uh, is 20 meters. And so the radius of that uh, is 10 meters. And so this casting array out 15 meters should cast array about five meters out beyond our current uh, range setup. But we could tie those things together. We could um, establish a variable that's the distance of the ray. Um, that is also the uh, radius of our range finder. So we can, you know, really kind of dial things in so that these things function uh, a little bit more tightly. But for the proof of concept, we'll just hardwire this value in. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, store the result of the ray. And really the only thing that I'm interested in for now is the object that we're hitting. So we can store the hit object. Uh, and I'm going to create a new variable and this is a game object and so this is the obj the object that our array hit so we can call this whatever we want i'm just going to call it object ray hit uh, and currently we're not getting uh, any object stored um, our debug line is yellow which is the same as our our look at and so i'm going to change this oh we'll change this to red it's array got to be look dangerous so we'll change it to red uh, I'm satisfied that my look at is functioning the way that I want to so I'm going to turn off the debug line and so um, we should get a red ray casting in the direction of the player or blue maybe I believe it says blue we turn debug on Not sure why we're getting. Oh, there it is. Okay, I can see it's just obscured um, by the the ray. So there's the there's the ray line over there. So I'll make sure that this is locked, and I will select the player. And because this game object is looking in the direction, uh, and the ray is casting from the direction that it's in, you can see that um, it's constantly looking and casting a ray. Uh, we can look down here and see that the object that we're hitting currently is the player. But if we hide behind the wall, you can see that the object that we're hitting is the wall. So we can use this. Oops. We can use this to determine if there's anything in our view that's obscuring uh, our enemy's view. Okay. Now um, we're going to make this a little bit more efficient, and this is, you know, this is something that we want to consider. We we do run the risk of um, unnecessary early optimization if we're thinking too much about the way that mechanics work. But when it comes to ray casting. And in this case, we want to be mindful um, of efficiency because rays can be fairly inefficient and there's some couple of bugs that we want to uh, potentially squash. Um, so the first thing that, that I'm mindful of is that my line of sight, I don't like that this cube that's being used as a reference object has a box collider. So I'm going to turn that off or in fact, maybe I'll just remove that uh, component altogether okay so we know that even though we weren't getting any interference from that we want to get rid of that um, the other thing that we want to be mindful of is that um, our, our ray is casting out in space and uh, running into our player um, but we don't ultimately we're not going to want to cast this ray um, every second of every frame okay because we don't really care um, if we have line of sight if the enemy's not aware of it. Um, or maybe we can make a condition to say, yeah, okay, well, we happen to have a random line of sight. It's pretty far, far away, so is the enemy aware? We'll get into that with some of the behavior tree um, aspects of this. Um, but as a general practice, um, we, we just want to cast the ray really as far as we need. I'm casting it a little bit further just to account for any you know anomalies that might pop up. Um, but we're, we're just really kind of, you know, making sure that um, we're, we're not doing any unnecessary uh, ray casting here. So um, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to want a duplicate state. Uh, and we're going to pass back and forth between two states just like we did with field of view and just like we did with a range finder. Let me unlock these so we can see this. So we have basically two states that we're switching between. Same thing with the range finder. We have two states that we're switching between 
to determine whether we're in line of sight or out of line of sight, range in and out. We'll do the same thing with, um, uh, excuse me, whether we're in range or out of range, in field of view or out of field of view, we'll do the same thing with line of sight. So uh, as I have before, I'm gonna assume that the first state um, has no line of sight. Okay, and then we'll copy and paste. And this one will be line of sight. So no line of sight and line of sight. Uh, I'll set this to green and set this one to red just to kind of conform to our other visual debugging. And now, so we want to pass this back and forth. Um, if we don't have line of sight, we're assuming that we're getting um, uh, obscured by the player or, or something's obscuring the player. And so we can compare uh, a couple of uh, a different, there's a couple of different things that we can do. Now, depending on the kind of filtering that we want to do, um, we could, I'll just go into the, let me pull this action browser out a little bit here and we'll take a closer look at this and see what some of our options are. Let's see if I can get this to move over just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to jump into our game object category. Okay, and from game object, we should be able to um, compare a couple things. This I think it's in game object. I don't see compare. I want to compare a game object. So let me type in compare. I guess those are all uh, hiding under logic. So let me go back under my logic category here. Alphabetical order. There we go. Logic. Okay, so um, we could. Uh, do an object compare um, and, and simply compare against the object that we're storing here um, and decide whether we're looking at the player or not. We could do an object tag compare or compare tags. Let me see if I can find that. I can't find anything in this list. Um, game object compare and compare tag. There we go. So got a couple of different options here. Let me collapse the look at, collapse the raycast for now, and let's see what the different the options are. We can do a game object compare, and we can compare our hit object, um, ooh, object has changed, I don't want that one. Let's remove that action, game object compare. Um, so in this case, uh, we could uh, specify our hit object, so the, the object that our ray is hitting, and we can compare that against either something in a variable so we could have this as an active target uh, which would be a good solution um, if we had a variable set up. In this case, um, because we're only testing against player, we could load in player. Um, and we can determine if this is equal to or not equal to. So um, if it is equal, um, in other words, it sees the player from the state of having no line of sight, we could pass it over to line of sight. So the equal event will create a new event. And I'm going to simply create a switched event or next event switch whatever you want to do um, and we'll borrow this switch and so we'll switch it to has line of sight uh, we'll do the same thing we'll do a game object compare let's see did that add I don't see it let's collapse this game object compare we'll do the same thing um, we'll specify what do we do here Where am I? There we go. We'll specify a game object. Uh, we'll specify the object that the ray is hitting. And if we're in line of sight, we're assuming that um, we got a positive player hit with our ray. Um, so what we want to do is compare against, again, I'm just going to hardwire the player in here for now, but this could be an active target variable. Uh, and if we're not equivalent to the player at any point, um, we're going to switch. We'll right click, we'll do a switch, and we'll pass this back. want to make sure we're testing this every frame. So we'll test every frame. Uh, and now um, we should switch back and forth between two different states, line of sight or no line of sight, uh, based on uh, whether the player object is getting hit by the ray or not. So let's test this. So again, I'll lock this real quick, grab the player, hit the play button. Let's see if we can grab the player and I'm just paying attention down here to what the uh, 
object array is hitting. So in this case, it's the player. And you can see that we have line of sight. We're in the, in the active line of sight. And if I drag this over and hide behind a wall, you can see that the object that's being hit in this case is the wall. Uh, and so we've switched back to no line of sight. I'll just kind of drag this around. And you can see that I'm just paying attention down here now. Once I get the um, confirm the basic logic is working, I can just see where we have line of sight and where we don't have line of sight. Okay, so we've got a basic line of sight uh, set up. Now, um, I am going to modify this a little bit because this loop here, this little logical loop we're starting, uh, we're casting uh, array right off the bat. And so in this case, this is not very efficient because uh, we're constantly casting array in both of these um, uh, in both of these states, which um, can be useful, but it's unnecessary if we're out of range. Um, and uh, you know we have this repetitive uh, interval for the array cast, and so um, we can we can look that up and see what the um, you know an efficient um, uh, array cast. I believe uh, one is going to be one per frame update. So. We're not asking it to do too much, but we still want to be mindful of, you know, we don't necessarily need to cast array if we don't have to, if we're not aware of our, our player in the first place. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to add a state in this state. Um, I'm just going to call it ray is off. So this is kind of the off state of our array. Um, and I'll set the start state here. And later what we'll do is based on uh, what we determine uh, is is appropriate if it's uh, um, you know field of view or field of view and line of sight. Um, if those conditions are met, then we can go flip on um, our raycast loop over here, and we'll do that. We'll take a look at um, uh, uh, the, the send event to be able to switch back and forth, have one state machine talk to another. But we'll do that a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, this series. So um, in the next presentation, what we'll do uh, is we'll establish, um, we basically have like a simple bool set up here, right? So we have this range finder, and we have out of range, in range. Uh, we have out of field of view, in field of view. And these are basically, uh, you know, these states are on and off, right? Um, and so we'll set a bool value for our enemy AI Objects. So we'll create a state machine here. It's kind of managing and listening to, and it'll track uh, the state of rangefinder, field of view, and line of sight, and whatever else we determine. And we'll pass this information up to our enemy AI, uh, and then start to create some some basic navigation behaviors based on that. But we'll do that uh, in the next couple of presentations.